Coming up on Hoosier Sports Night, the IU baseball team fell flat when they hosted Nebraska for a three-game set. And now that we've entered April, one of Indiana's greatest traditions is drawing near. We take a look at the men's and women's Little 500. This is Hoosier Sports Night. From Franklin Hall, on the campus of Indiana University, you're watching Hoosier Sports Night. Hello and welcome to Hoosier Sports Night. I'm Juliana Sherry. And I'm David Sugarman. Now there's only a month left until the end of the school year and hearing my mom being unhappy with my finals week performance. Mother, it's still an A if there's a minus next to it. But regardless, between now and then, there's still a lot of action for IU Athletics. Yeah, David, the IU baseball team looked to stay undefeated in the Big Ten when they took on the Nebraska Cornhuskers at home this past weekend. IUS TV baseball beat reporter Austin Matricardi was there to catch all of the action. Jonathan Stever had a strong start on Friday for Indiana, giving up two earned runs over six and a third while striking out four batters. The Hoosier bullpen combined to give up four earned runs in the eighth inning, which proved to be the difference in the game with the Huskers winning seven to three. On Saturday, the Hoosier offense couldn't back up a strong start from pitcher Brian Hobby, who allowed two earned runs over six innings and also collected three strikeouts. The Hoosiers would drop that game 3-1. to one. Paulie Milto took the mound for IU on Sunday, giving up just one earned run over six and a third and striking out five. The Hoosiers threatened to score on multiple occasions, but could only scratch one run across. The game ended in a one-to-one -one tie due to Nebraska's travel curfew, so Indiana avoided the sweep. After the game, we caught up with Coach Chris Limonis. Yeah, Paulie was great. I thought that was the best he'd thrown in our program. So I'm excited for that, to see him and see him pitch and command the zone. and Just had good stuff all day. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Austin Matricardi. Indiana faced in-state rival Ball State in a matchup that went to 11 innings, ending with a Hoosier victory 3-2. Even though the Hoosiers had two errors, infielder Matt Lloyd had his best game of the season, going 3-4 for four and hitting the walk-off home run. Junior pitcher Austin Foote was rewarded with his first win of the season after two shutout innings and three strikeouts. Next up, the Hoosiers hit the road when they traveled to West Lafayette for a three-game set against the Purdue Boilermakers. You can catch Indiana back at home the weekend of April 14th when they'll take on Minnesota in a three-game series. This past weekend, a couple teams from Michigan made their way to Bloomington to take on the men's tennis team. IUSTV tennis reporter Jessica Jopic was outside at the varsity courts for the first time this season. The Indiana men's tennis team went to take on both the Michigan Wolverines and the Michigan State Spartans over this past weekend. At the IU Tennis Center on Friday, the Hoosiers were up against the number 18 Michigan. Starting in doubles, the Hoosiers kept it close as Antonio Sabellin and Stefan Lugnick tied the number 66 Michigan doubles team. But the men could not pull ahead as the Wolverines took the first point of the match. Looking for the win, the Hoosiers put up a fight in each of their singles matches, keeping their scores close until the very end. However, none of the IU men could get their hands on the win as they fell Indiana 0, Michigan 7. On Sunday, the Hoosiers took the match to the outside courts for the first time this season as they played the Michigan State Spartans. Starting in doubles, Indiana won two of the three double matches, clinching the first point of the match and setting the pace for the rest of the day. The Spartans held on in the singles matches as they grabbed the first singles point in the number two spot. However, the Hoosiers answered with a win from Bennett Crane. The match went back and forth until it came down to the final two matchups of the day. Despite the closeness of the match, Matthew McCoy rallied for the final win for the Hoosiers, solidifying the Indiana victory over Michigan State, 4-3. After the match, senior Matthew McCoy talks about the team moving forward in their season. I mean, right now, as of now, we're in the NCAA tournament if we were to keep our ranking. So that's really our goal, like it has been all year, to get into the NCAA tournament because that would be huge for the program. So we're right there, and when it comes to like playing Michigan State, these are matches that we need to win. So I think we just came into it knowing that, you know, we just need to execute and play our game because this is a match that we're highly capable of winning. I think today, we, like, honestly, we executed to some degree, but we need to be a lot sharper. 
than we were, especially going against Ohio State, who's obviously very, very good, and, and Penn State, who's also a tough team. So I think we're really going to kind of hone in on being better at executing throughout the entirety of the match this week and, and having a little bit better focus, uh, which is what we need to bring to next weekend. So. The Indiana men's tennis team goes on the road this weekend as they take on the Ohio State Buckeyes and then Penn State Nittany Lions. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Jessica Jopic. Spring has sprung and the women's tennis team took their match to the great outdoors on the IU varsity courts in a 4-2 loss against the Marquette Golden Eagles Sunday morning. The Hoosiers lost momentum early as Paul... Pauli Gutierrez and Pauline Jarin lost in a 6-1 match on court two, not putting up a win until the fourth game. Now over on court three, Caitlin Bernard and Emma Love pulled away on spot three to put the decision of the doubles point up to number one pair Madison Appel and Kim Schmeider. Appel and Schmeider had multiple chances to close out the match and give the Hoosiers the doubles point, but sadly for IU they were unable to capitalize. The Marquette duo of Sylvia Ambrosio and Paula Tormos fought back to send their match into tiebreak. Appel and Schmeider fell behind early in the tiebreaker and were unable to recapture early momentum, causing the Hoosiers to fall in doubles. In singles, the Hoosiers went back and forth, losing four matches and the singles points. IU has two home matches left this season, Illinois on Friday, April 7th, and Senior Day on April 9th when they take on the Northwestern Wildcats. One of IU's oldest traditions, the Little 500, is just around the corner. With the spring series underway, we take a look at the sights and sounds of Qualls. That one day in April is now just a few weeks away. With the Little 500 men's and women's races getting close, spring series are underway, including a fan favorite, Qualls. Short for qualifications, teams ride in this event to qualify for the race as well as decide their starting position on race day. With teams ranging from Mother Bears to the majority of Greek life, all the way to the ski club, the field is once again wide open, especially with neither of the returning champs from the men's or women's race back to defend their title. We caught up with the ski club, who finished fourth in quals on the women's side, about their mindset going forward. I mean, the end goal is the race, right? So everything is getting us to that day, and this is just one of those steps on the way. And now with less than a month leading up to the race, what is the training regimen like as you get closer and closer? Yeah, it's pretty much just uh, working with the mentality. Make sure our mentality is good, positive, optimistic. So that's what we're working with this year. And what is your guys' goal for the race? To win, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we're always trying to win. But uh, it'll represent how hard we worked this season, regardless of if we get that trophy or not. So yeah, we're excited. With the fans and teams geared up for another exciting race, two new teams will take home the ultimate prize. One day in April, it's only a few weeks away. The women's race will take place on Friday, April 20th at 4 p.m. and the men's race will be the following day starting at 2 p.m. Checking out the top teams from Qualls, Sigma Alpha Epsilon leads the way for the men with Beta and Cutters not far behind. And on the women's side, Delta Gamma set a Qualls record with a time of just a shade over 2.33. Kappa Alpha Theta came in second, clocking in at just over 2.37 with Alpha Omicron Pi, the Ski Club, and Alpha Chi Omega rounding out the top five. But while Qualls is important, David, it isn't on the only determining factor on race day. And you're absolutely right. I mean, great example. Fine Mew called 25th a year ago. They ended up finishing 6th on race day. This year, again, Fine Mew didn't call great. They finished 17th. But I was talking to them last week. They're eyeing a spot on the podium, a top three finish. It really speaks to the depth in these races. Yes, yeah, certainly a lot of depth for these teams and certainly going to be exciting with the historic 30th running of the race. Absolutely. Now for the track to the diamond, the Indiana softball team is continuing Big Ten play on the road and looking to get back in the win column after losing four out of their last five games. Now, the Hoosiers have struggled with inconsistency at the plate this season, but if you look hard enough, there's always a silver lining. For Indiana, that's come from the number four spot in their lineup. Yeah, Karamia Chirigos, the designated player, has knocked three home runs in the past two weeks, including the third grand slam of her career. IUSTV softball beat reporter Kaylee Rodell headed out to Andy Moore Field for the scoop on the senior. Georgia native Kara Mia Trigos is looking to close out her career as a senior here at Indiana University on a high note. Trigos is not only known on the team as their big hitter, but also as a leader in the lineup that can bring them to victory. 
you know, I think the success for our, our team is Karami is in a position where she's a DP and quite, quite frankly, uh, that's her role. Her role is to hit in runs and moving forward, her, her being successful at the plate is, is going to help us be successful as a team. Last year was a career high for Trigos with 25 RBIs, 33 hits, and 7 home runs. This year, the senior is already on her way to eclipse these numbers with 25 knocks, 23 runs driven in, and 5 out-of-the-park shots this season. Batting cleanup for the Hoosiers, the task of breaking open Indiana's hitting often falls on the shoulders of the designated player, but the pressure only motivates her to work harder in each at-bat. I think it's definitely a different mentality, though. Um, you look at um, first base, you're on the field um, every inning. So if you get out, you have something to take your mind off that you can focus on defense. But as a DP, if you get out, you get to sit and wait uh, for another at-bat in the game. Um, but I don't think if it's pressure, you just have a different mindset. And as I've matured, I've definitely got a better mentality. And I think it um, definitely works better for a DP. With five weeks left in the season, Trigos and the Hoosiers will face two ranked opponents in Minnesota and Michigan before closing out their regular season with Michigan State here at home. For IUS TV, I'm Kaylee Rodell. Tree goes on such a roll right now. I don't know a pitcher in the Big Ten that thinks she can sling it past her. Without a doubt, David, she is the hot hand right now at the plate for the Hoosiers, but she'll have her hands full this Friday as IU heads to Minneapolis, where they'll face off against the second best pitcher in the league. You can catch their next battle at Andy Moore Field when the team plays their biggest rival, the Purdue Boilermakers, on April 11th. And finally returning home after starting the spring season with three road tourneys is the men's golf team. The Hoosier Invitational hosted 14 teams in IU's lone home tournament. The Hoosiers entered day two of the tournament on Saturday in fourth place after Brock Oxenreiter matched his season best score with a four under 67 on day one. Round three on Saturday saw three of Indiana's five players finish in the top 12, contributing to the team score of 859. After rounds of 72 and 71 on Friday, redshirt junior Jake Brown consisted with, continued with consistency in round three, posting a one under score of 70, closing the tournament with an even to par score of 213 and a tie for eighth place. Redshirt sophomore Jack Sparrow registered three birdies and one bogey to finish the day at two under par for the round and two over for the tournament, giving him the best finish of his career at a tie for 12th. After the final putt, head coach Mike Mayer reflected on how the Hoosiers came back from a disappointing finish in round two. You know, we went out today to try to shoot the best round <laughs> possible and the best round of the tournament, and, and we did it as a team. We shot our best round today. Uh, I, I thought we got off to a really good start. Uh, we had one goal in mind. I thought Charlotte was out of reach, but uh, we fought back hard from fourth place to second place, and, and we did what we needed to do. Uh, uh, it was a very positive day for this program, and I think it's going to help us move forward. The Hoosiers walked away from the tournament with a runner-up finish to the Charlotte 49ers. The golf team now has two weeks to prepare for the Boilermaker Intercollegiate Tournament in West Lafayette on the 15th and 16th of April. Now over the next week, there are plenty of opportunities to pick up your Crimson Guard reward points and cash them in for award before the end of the school year. Yes, David, the women's soccer team is back in action this spring. Be sure to head out to Jerry Igley Field on Saturday. Also, the women's tennis team has matches on Friday and Sunday. Here are all the events you can catch between now and next week. Don't forget to like our page, IUSTV Sports, on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at IUSTV Sports. For Juliana Sherry, I'm David Sugarman. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.